The way we're going to approach the subject of what is a tensor is by starting with the concept of a vector. And we're going to begin from the very, very basics, and we're going to clear up how to get from the concept of a vector to the concept of a tensor. So we're going to start this lecture with an elementary understanding of what a vector is. And I don't want you to think that that's going to be something familiar, because in your mind, or in the mind of many students who approach this subject, they think they know all about vectors because they've made their bones, because they have, uh, in physics and in basic uh, electromagnetism and mechanics, they know how vectors work. They know how to add two vectors together. They know how to take the dot product between two vectors, right? They know how to take the cross product between two vectors to produce a third vector. They know all kinds of things about vectors, and they're very good with them. They know how to translate them and move them around. They know how to scale them, right? That's, they know how to, um, uh, they have a very good understanding of how vectors function. The problem is, is all of that stuff we need to forget. We need to actually s delete from our mind because we are going to start with the mathematical concept of a vector, which is not the same thing. So everything that you know about vectors, we erase, and we're going to start fresh. And where do we begin? We begin with the notion that a vector is an element of a set. And that set is called a vector space. And I'll call it Vs for vector space. And a vector space is a set, and every element in it is a vector. So if you come out of this vector space, say you're, you're the element W, or you're the element V, or you're the element S, you are a vector. And now, since there are many different types of sets in the world, we have to understand what kind of set makes a vector space. What is it that actually makes... Um, uh, what, what, because there are many sets that you can have. It's not just every set is a vector space. You have to have a certain set of properties associated with the, uh, the set. And those properties are what's going to distinguish a vector space set from any other set. And the first key property is that it must have, in addition to the set itself, it must have an operation called addition, and it's vector addition. The idea between for vector addition is that with a, if you put a vector on the left, a vector on the right, you're going to get a vector result. So here we might put W, V, and we're going to get another vector out, we could call it T. The vector addition allows you to add two vectors together. And what's important about it is that, um, is that it only works for vectors in the set. It's not a general addition rule that allows you to add vectors from different vector spaces or different spaces altogether. It only allows you to take two vectors in the set, you know, some of these or whatever's still back here. You can take two vectors, put on the left and right, and you get a third member, and that member is also in the set. So in this case, T would also have to be part of the vector space because it must be closed. You must be able to add any two vectors, and, you and the one thing that you get as a result is in the vector space. It's in the vector space itself. If you can't do that, you don't have a vector space. So you have to define this concept of addition. Then the next thing you need is you need to be able to reach in to a bucket of numbers. And that bucket of numbers are the bucket of real numbers. All the real numbers live in this little bucket, say. And you need to be able to pull out any real number, we'll call it A, and you need to have an, a sense of how to multiply a vector from the vector space, any vector in the vector space, by this real number. And that multiplication is called scalar multiplication. And so we symbolize that by the real number times the vector, and that is an element of the vector space. We'll call the vector space here say uh, w, w is the name of the vector space. So, so any scalar times a vector is also a vector in w. And this process here is called scalar multiplication. And the objects that come out of the real numbers, these, the real number bumps uh, bin are called scalars. Now, vector spaces use this real number bin. If they use the real number bin, they are called real vector spaces. It's a real vector space if it uses a bin of real numbers. 
If it used a bin of, say, complex numbers, then it would be called a complex vector space. So you, you almost have to distinguish. If you're going to create a vector space, you have to assert not only this addition property, but you have to make a decision. Is it going to be real numbers or complex numbers? Um, obviously, the complex numbers includes the real numbers, so, but you still have to choose. And for general relativity, we will always, always choose real vector spaces for now. Um, there is some complex vector spaces in general relativity, but not anything we're going to talk about in these lectures. So we don't worry about complex vector spaces, just real vector spaces. So now, once we've done this, once we've got our, we've got our addition property, we've got our scalar multiplication property, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, work on the combination of the two. And this should be very simple. If I take a, if, and this is what I'll do, I'll show you, this is my vector space, right? It's the vector space, we're gonna call it V, it's got its addition property, it's got the real numbers, the, uh, the, the scale is from the real numbers, and um, if I take one vector that's scaled by a real number and add it to another vector that's scaled by a real number, and both of these vectors come from V, I should be able to get another vector in the vector space. And this makes perfect sense, of course, because this is a vector in the vector space, this is a vector in the vector space, this is the addition property, the vector addition property associated with this vector space. Therefore, it must be that the sum of those two is also in the vector space. And once I've asserted this, then I just need to assert the simple point of linearity, where if I did aw plus at, I get a times w plus t, which means which means that the scalar, the, the, scaled pro, the, the scalar product with w plus the scalar product with t is the same as adding w plus t and multiplying by the scalar. And this is simply uh, a very critical property called linearity. And it means that our vector space is linear. And th this didn't have to be that way, by the way. It could have been that this equaled, say, a squared w plus t. That does happen for some exotic forms of of spaces, but not the ones we're talking about. This is not what we're using. So we've got this, we've got several things. We've got our, um, our linearity property, which encompasses both our vector addition property and our scalar multiplication property. And then one last thing that defines a vector space unambiguously is we need to make sure that any vector w that is an element of this vector space, say our vector space is v, if w is, if if w is an element of v, then there's another vector in the vector space b called minus w. And that is characterized by the fact that w with a vector addition of minus w equals 0. And sure enough, um, 0, therefore, is always a vector in every vector space. 0 must be a vector in the vector space, and every vector must have its opposite. And yes, the opposite is if I take from my bin of real numbers, if I take minus 1 and I use that to multiply by a vector w, that product is in fact minus w and uh, it's always part of the vector space. So, um, so far so good. We've got, uh, we've got our vector space v. And we've got the vector addition property. We've got the scalar multiplication property from the real numbers. So this is a real vector space. And we know that it's linear. And that is our vector space. Now, an interesting thing is that we have to be able to answer one or two important questions about an elementary vector space. We've already answered one. Is it a real vector space or a complex vector space? There's actually two other kinds. It could be quaternionic or it could be octionic, but there's only four. There's four different kinds of vector spaces, and, and uh, anything other than those four is a more of a mathematical generalization of the concept. But when we talk about vector spaces, we're almost always talking about, um, uh, we're almost always talking about
uh, real or complex vector spaces. Complex vector spaces are important in quantum mechanics, but in general relativity, we're dealing with real vector spaces. But if I did this again, I could create another vector space, W, and it'll also have be a real vector space, and it'll have its own vector addition property. Now I can pull out vectors from W, say I pulled out, well, let's, let's just say I called it R, and I pulled out a vector S, and I pulled out a vector T, and from V, let's say I pulled out a vector little w, uh, little uh, q, and how about little uh, p, right? So these are vectors from w, these are vectors from w, these are vectors, I'm sorry, these are vectors from w, and these are vectors from q. Now, the vector addition property of w is such that I can take any of these two and add them, and I can get another vector inside uh, uh, inside V. So W plus Q equals, say, M. Likewise, I can take R plus S, and I can get another vector out of, out of W, and say that one was called, well, say, say it was T, right? The thing that's very important to know is this vector addition property only works for these vectors. And this vector addition property only works for those vectors. This is not the same plus sign as this. And the only thing that gives it away is knowing that R and S are elements of W, and W and Q are elements of V. If you didn't know that, you might think that these represent the same operation, but these are different operations. You can never, never write W plus R, because W comes from V, and R comes from W, and there is no defined operation that adds elements of V to elements of W. They, it just doesn't exist. We have not defined it. Now, you could define something like that. There, it is possible, but that's not what we're doing. We're creating nothing. All we're creating is addition properties for individual vector spaces. So, but it is also now a, an important question to ask, what, what's the difference between this vector space and this vector space other than the name? And they're both real vector spaces, so uh, you could imagine if this was a complex vector space, that would be different from a real vector space. But symbolically, or, or mathematically, is there a way of distinguishing these two? And the answer is, uh, often there is not. Uh, but there is one key characteristic that can distinguish between two vector spaces, and that's the dimension of the vector space. So the way we learn about dimensions is we're going to ask the very fundamental question. If I draw a random vector, any vector, any arbitrary vector out of V, out of the space V, let's say we picked um, Q. If I draw, draw, drew an arbitrary vector out of V, I want to know what's the minimum number of other vectors I would need to be able to linearly combine them to create Q. So say there's a vector AW plus B, P, plus C, um, uh, let's say uh, uh, N, plus D, uh, O, about O, and then we could go on and on and on. And the question is, is I need to find a minimal set of vectors, A, P, N, O, that multiplied by real numbers will give me any Q in the vector space. And if I can find a minimal set of those vectors, in this case, the minimal set might be W, P, N, and O, let's say. If I can find that minimal set, I know that I can express any vector, any vector in V, as a linear combination of these four basis vectors. And that's what these are called. These are called basis vectors. And basis vectors, they, they are not unique inside a vector space. Uh, you can obviously see why they wouldn't be unique, because if W is a basis vector, then AW would also be a basis vector, because you could just rescale it by choosing another real number. So clearly basis vectors aren't unique, but what is important is the number of them. I need the minimal number that can capture every vector in the vector space. And in this case, I've said that the minimal number is 4. And so I, what I'm saying now is that the dimension of V equals 4. And we're going to use 4 dimension of 4 for all of our work because 4 is um, the dimensions of space-time and space-time is 
uh, what we're going to talk about. We're trying to shoot for general relativity, so we're going to talk about four-dimensional vector spaces. But if V is a dimension of four, and I can put that right here, say, maybe a little circle around it, what about W? Well, if W has the same number of dimensions, then W and V are only different because they're named differently. There's got to be something to distinguish them, so it's got to be the name. But otherwise, if they're the same dimension, they're actually so similar that the differences between these two vector spaces is entirely superficial. And we call that isomorphic. Two vector spaces are isomorphic if, they're in one, if you can establish a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two, and if operations in this vector space are in correspondence to operations in that vector space. We're not going to talk too much about it. But the point is, is that other than the name, these two vector spaces are mathematically very, very, very similar. And you really have to come up with ways of distinguishing them. Okay, so um, where we're at now is we've covered the elementary properties that all vector spaces must have. And those elementary properties uh, are, are, they must be defined with a vector addition. They must be defined with a scalar multiplication, generally for real numbers for what we're going to do. They must be linear, and um, they uh, um, must have a dimension. And in our case, the dimension is 4. Now, understand, the only operation we have between two vectors in one vector space is um, if, if uh, V and if W, oops, if V and W are members of the vector space V, I can add them, but I can't do anything else. Notice we have not discussed this concept. This is a totally different concept. Remember a dot product between two little pointy things that we learned in physics? That's an element of the real numbers, right? We have not learned how to take two vectors and turn them into a real number. That This does not exist in a vector space. There's no notion of a cross product in a vector space. By the way, a cross product produces another uh, vector, but not necessarily in the same vector space as these two. Um, so we don't have a notion of a cross product. We don't have a notion of a magnitude, right? Which, remember, that was v dot v, right? We do not have a, a notion of a magnitude, um, or a squared magnitude, I should say. That doesn't exist. None of these things exist in real, pure, elementary vector spaces. All of this stuff is advanced in a weird way, right? It's it's not very complicated, but it is stuff that's added to vector spaces that make them more sophisticated than the elementary vector spaces. Very few things out there in the world are actually purely elementary vector spaces. But, but all vector spaces are, in fact, elementary vector spaces at least. And if they don't have these properties, they're not vector spaces at all. But they can have other properties like dot products and cross products and magnitudes and things like that. But this is what we're going to start talking about next. But right now, understand, this is the core element of a vector space. This is what makes a vector space. So uh, our next uh, lecture is going to be um, a little bit more about uh, how to now start building maps between vector spaces.